Hey, welcome back to the Breaking Bad Insider Podcast. My name is Kelly Dixon. We're here to talk about episode 306, which is called Sunset. Um, I'm here as usual with my executive producer, Vince Gilligan. Greetings. <laughs> the writer and director of this episode, John Scheiben. Hello. Uh, our music supervisor, Thomas Gullibich. Hello. And our composer, Dave Porter. Hello. The first thing I was going to bring up is, John, I know you're a big fan of horror and slasher movies. Yeah. And so, <laughs> big, big smile from you. And so um, we're opening up this episode a little bit different, a lot different, actually, than we usually open up. This is probably the first time in my, in, in my career where I've written a, a location and then found exactly what I was thinking of. I think it was Michelle McLaren, who was here filming, uh, came up with the notion of a flagpole. And... Uh, uh, so that uh, and and a, a flagpole without a flag that makes our haunting noise. I'm so happy with it, and it's so it, it, it to to be able to do to play all those little horror movie tropes, uh, which we did the the POVs, the tracking shots, the discoveries, the the the, the uh, finding the dead body, somebody behind you, all those things. Talk about the flies too. How'd you get all those flies? Well, you know, body there. yeah, the the part of the uh, and everybody has seen it, I assume, when they tune in this podcast. Yeah. Um, so finding the uh, the dead body, um, we did want to play with sound and then play with the visuals, um, uh, uh, and so the sound of the flies had to be mixed just right to draw this man's attention, the cop's attention, to draw him back there. But when he got there, we had no flies on the set at all. All the flies you see are are CGI and uh, pretty amazing, actually, I think. The, the top of Act One actually didn't begin with Walt, but it started with a scene where Hank catches up with his ASAC, but uh, it, it, was a, it was a nice scene. It, it was Hank catching up with him and wanting him to sign uh, a, a warrant. To get a wiretap, yeah. To get a wiretap for, on, on Jesse Pinkman. Um, once it was shot and cut together and put in the show and we were facing some time constraints, the decision was made to take it out. And honestly, the first time we see Hank, he's in the car, he's got a pile of junk food in the seat next to him, and we get it, and he's, and he's frazzled, and he, and he tells his wife, I ain't giving up on this one. We get it. And what's amazing about this whole process uh, to me is that I, I do think we needed it. I think we needed it, not necessarily for the final product, but I think, I think it helped the actors know where they were, it helped the, the reader, it helped the studio, the network, it helped the, the cast and crew to know what the story was, and then, if we, and then when you get to the editing room, you're remaking the whole thing. Talk about those instruments you use specific to the cousins. They use a certain instrument, instrumentation, instruments. Yeah, like we, musical we instruments. were fortunate to have a, a, a friend who's, uh, who is born and raised in Mexico and is a percussion player. And he has uh, an amazing collection of drums and percussion instruments. And particularly these whistles, you hear them every time the cousins come around. I, find a way to fit them in but there's whistles that the Aztecs used they're called war whistles huh. and they're basically just incredibly shrill and eerie and they were designed for the battlefield to scare the pants off anybody else and uh, and we use music often in a way to emphasize what will happen or what may happen uh, and then when it actually happens we let natural sound and the realism of the moment make the play for us which is very that's a good thing to talk about because that's very different than than most tv shows it's time honored in movies and television that the music tells you how to feel emotionally reinforces an emotion that is very often kind of apparent it's like printing too much money you print too much money it deflates the value the va de exactly <laughs> i think you know we get brought in a lot i think to dave and i to to fix problems i think that part of the job of a music supervisor or a composer is to look at something objectively and be able to say, this needs a little bit of help, how can we help it? And one of the things that was really clear to me from the pilot was that we really could have had no music in that entire pilot and it would have been incredibly powerful. It was very easy, I think, for us to just pull everything back into the bare essentials and make sure that the story was really what was being led and the music was simply supporting in the right moments and, and nudging things along. I wanted to talk to you guys about um, the other old friend that we're losing. The RV. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, uh, the good news is that that's not the actual, that is not our actual RV that gets crushed. Are you serious? Oh, you didn't know that? No, are you serious? No, no, no. Yeah. We're, oh, we're saving no. that one for the Smithsonian. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> right on, so let's go break bad.